The document which opens the exhibition is the 1819 uh, Treaty of Singapore, which was signed between Sir Sanford Raffles, representing the British East India Company, and uh, Singapore's then Malay rulers, the Sultan uh, Hussein and the Temenggong Abdul Rahman. And what it did was that it gave the British uh, exclusive rights to uh, form a, set up a trading post in Singapore uh, in exchange for, for compensation for, for the Malay rulers. On display in the exhibition is an original copy of Raffles uh, regulations were set out across uh, 1823 uh, and these regulations uh, represent the first attempt, the earliest attempt by the British uh, to establish a formal legal code in Singapore. So uh, the interesting thing about the regulations was that they were actually illegal uh, and this was because uh, neither Raffles nor his uh, superiors in Bengal had the legal authority to appoint judges and uh, enact British laws. The British didn't even have sovereignty over Singapore at that point in 1823. Uh, they would only uh, attain sovereignty uh, it, uh, from the Malay rulers of Singapore in 1824. So they were essentially in Singapore enacting laws which were legal on land which they didn't possess. Uh, although to be fair to Raffles, he meant his regulations to be provisional uh, until such time they could bring in a formal uh, uh, laws to Singapore, British laws to Singapore. Uh, which eventually came in 1826. The Europeans in Singapore were actually aware that the regulations were illegal. There were the various implications of, of administering a, a, a trading post uh, without a proper legal code. So one story was uh, uh, relating to the first president, William Farker, was that he actually charged uh, a British sea captain, this man called uh, Captain Gillian, uh, for rape in Singapore. Uh, and he had him impounded uh, and sent to the High Court in British Bengal for punishment. Uh, however, the court in Bengal found uh, Gillian innocent. Uh, Fakir didn't actually have the rights, uh, the legal authority to impound him. He turned around and successfully sued Fakir. How were the regulations propagated to the people of living in Singapore at the time? Right? So apparently, uh, copies of the regulations were originally in English language and then they were translated into uh, 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 Chinese and Malay languages and other local languages and then they were fixed at uh, prominent locations around the town centre. Uh, for some of the regulations, uh, uh, in particular this one, uh, this regulation on uh, prohibiting gambling, uh, what Raffles did was that, uh, because he wanted it to be uh, uh, to come into effect right away, he, he had it uh, announced to the people by beat of gong. Uh, so essentially there was someone beating a gong and there would be a town crier behind him who would read out the, the regulation uh, in the different languages. The, the regulations, uh, what it did was that it introduced basic principles of British law into Singapore uh, while also respecting uh, local laws and customs, uh, particularly regarding religion, uh, marriage and inheritance. The British were keen to accommodate these uh, local customs insofar as they did not uh, totally go against their own laws. As far as it was within a reasonable bounds, the British would accommodate uh, local uh, practices. And this pragmatic concession to balance uh, English laws with uh, local customs would become a hallmark of uh, British governance uh, in Singapore.